All right, folks, welcome back. This is episode nine for the 2022 ICT Mentorship on YouTube. This lecture is going to be on Power 3, which is Accumulation Manipulation and Distribution, and New York PM Session Opportunities. All right, so we're looking at the NASDAQ E-mini futures. This is the continuous chart on trading view. So if you look at the daily range where we've been, we're inside this range here. Okay, so we have this swing high and this swing low. Now, why am I picking these two reference points? Well, namely, this is the low most recently after taking out this short-term low. So we've dug into all the sell-side liquidity resting below that low. We retraced back up inside of this high to that low. So we went back up into a premium, the range high to low, running a FIB just to get the 50% level. That gives us equilibrium. Anything below that is a discount. Notice how the market traded down on Monday into a deep discount, but did not take out these lows over here. But look how we closed on Monday. We had an indecisive candle. The body was basically absent. The open and close was essentially you know, the same thing. If we have that and the market's trading down into a discount, even though we might have a low down here that we're targeting, this may require a retracement. Now notice at the close of Monday's trading, we had an imbalance from this low and this high. On Tuesday's trading overnight, the equities markets had a run up into this imbalance here. So this fair value gap was retraded to in here. This low and this high will look at that in reference to the lower time frames. This lower level is the low end of the fair value gap on a daily chart. And this level up here is the upper end of the fair value gap. I'm taking your attention to Monday's trading. And I want to talk a little bit about power three, which is accumulation, distribution, and manipulation. Okay, so generally my teachings are like this. If I'm bullish, I'm expecting the opening price to be near the low of the day or the session. Then it trades lower, making some important low, and then rallies, creates a high, and then closes near the high of the day. Now, it's not important for you to try to predict the closing price. What I'm trying to train you to anticipate is the likelihood of the market making some kind of a fake move, like a Judas swing. Okay, Judas swing is the false move. Typically, in London and in New York session, there are fake runs that start off a move. And I walked you through it last week on my community tab where I outlined the actual Judas swing for that particular day. Using the fair value gap, I outlined the, the low. I was only off by a quarter of a point for the low end of the range, and it created the low of the day. The idea is what I'm going to show you here as well. On Monday, we had price drop down overnight, consolidated, and then we have a little bit of a rally ahead of the equities open. Okay, so in here, we have 8.30 in the morning. If you look at 8.30, what do we have? We have the highs over here. They're suspect because they're relative equal highs there. But look what we left here ahead of 8.30. We had this huge imbalance. So if we run these highs out after the open at 9.30, it's likely to trade down into that and rebalance. But watch what it does. It, and we trade up into that level here, which creates the fair value gaps low end parameter. Remember, this is Monday's trading. It sells off. So this line isn't here on Monday. It's, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the likelihood of coming back down into this area here after taking these highs out. If it does so, 
if it trades back into this imbalance, that's a good candidate to go long. Now, the imbalance in here, if you go to the left of it, you can see the down close candles. That's your bullish order block. The market trades down, hits the order block, and it's an afternoon trade. So it starts to rally and then consolidates into the close. Overnight, we create a wicked run last night. This was an, it ran last night and most of all the move for today was done before we even got to the opening of the morning. Had a little bit of a retracement after 8.30 and at 9.30 we consolidated. I'll talk a little bit about that as a market profile in a moment, but then we drop down, create an important low of the day, and then we rally. It got real close to the fair value gaps high end parameter, but didn't get to it. We don't need, it's just like I was mentioning here, you don't need to try to predict the closing price with power three, which is accumulation, manipulation. So in other words, if you're bullish, it opens where you think it's going to trade higher, it's going to be most likely a small little move lower. That's the move you want to try to go in and hunt along. If you miss it, you want to try to get long real close to where the opening price is. Now the question is going to be is where is the opening price? Well, I like 830. Okay, you can use the opening price here at 830. Draw that out in time. Did we go below it? Yes. Did we go inside the imbalance? Yes. Did we take out a short-term low? Yes. Did we hit an order block? Yes. Was it an optimal trade entry? Yes. Lots of factors there. Over here, same thing. Opening price here. Did we trade lower than that? Yes. Did it go even lower than that later on in the afternoon? Yes. And then it rallied, taking out the relative equal highs here. And again, gravitating towards that upper end of that fair value gap on the daily chart. Now I'm in a five minute chart on that same February 14th. And I want to take you closer to what price has done in here. That imbalance, the lowest portion of it here with all the down closed candles here. Now this is anchored to the daily bullish order block. But you can see how we traded into it here with one, two, three, four down closed candles. That is a complete order block on this time frame. So consecutive down closed candles right before a price surge that has an imbalance. That's how you find your order blocks. Okay, so a high probability order block would be your narrative or your bias is bullish. You're looking for displacement. That's this right here. Where the market runs real quick higher and the down close candles you want to mark that out and anticipate a return back into that now again this level is not there yet we don't know this level until monday's close so don't be tricked thinking that i had this level here and i knew it was going to go right to that level and turn i'm not suggesting that at all what i'm suggesting is, is watch what happens when it creates that high it breaks down all of this price action here gets overran into a retracement back down into this imbalance here. The low of this candle and the high of this candle, that right there, that's your fair value gap. With an order block and optimal trade entry. Rallies, even though it's sloppy, it's still continuously driving higher. This high at the close on this day here at say 4.30, okay? 4.30 in the afternoon to me, that's like the close for me. Now, now, it trades a little bit later than that and then closes for a little while. And it also technically closes when the bell rings at 4 o'clock p.m. You know, local time in New York. Because there's a little bit of trading past that, I like to just look at 4.30 and just consider that where we are in terms of what we've done for the full range and then determine what I have left for it and be in balance or liquidity pools. Here is that drop down here on a one minute chart. It's digging into that order block right here. If you look real close, let me go back up one slide. I want you to see what I'm showing you here. Right here, this price action, see 14,140, 14,120. This little area right here, I'm looking at on a one minute chart. 14,140. 14, 120 in that vicinity. See that small little gap right there? See that? See the swing high? 
We trade above it, create a fair value gap there, trade down into it. This is an afternoon trade. This is two o'clock in the afternoon, local time in New York, inside the order block, inside the fair value gap, inside a retracement of the fair value gap that sets the stage of a market run up into a higher retracement. Now, we don't know if this is going to be the closing parameter for a daily fair value gap. We don't need to know that yet. But this is a likely scenario to go long. And we can look for a run back up into this range here. Or run the buy stops above here. Or maybe inside here. Sloppy run, but nonetheless, it's still pressing higher. Now here's today on the 15th of February, 2022. Notice what we had. We had this enormous price run overnight in technically the London session. Now, a lot of you are going to ask, would I have caught this? No. No, I wouldn't have caught it. I would have missed it. And I would, if I was awake, I wouldn't have seen it coming. Let's just put it that way. So this right here was a complete surprise to me when I woke up, saw it. But I want you to think about when you have these overnight runs that were basically these big moves overnight before the session begins in New York. When you're trading equities, this also works with Forex too. So it's important to try not to chase price. This is what I mean by don't chase it. Don't chase it. Last week, when I was commenting and outlining the NASDAQ and giving you a fair value gap real time, explaining to where I thought I was going to draw down to, and it created the New York session low of the day. Okay, that's what I was outlining. Just take a look at it. Go back and look at it. You'll see it's it's pretty obvious. The same logic, I'm amplifying that here. Okay, Overnight, what was the market doing? It was rallying. So when we open up at 8.30, do we go in here and start buying it just because it's gone up overnight? No, we don't chase it. You have to wait. No, we don't chase it. We have to wait for more information. What information are we waiting for? Well, typically, whenever you see a big run up or a big run down, there's a consolidation that takes place shortly after. Now, not always. Sometimes it just keeps on ripping higher or lower, and you'll either miss a move, or if you get lucky, maybe you can participate in it. But this is what I typically look for. So if there's a lot of range movement overnight, what's overnight? Um, 2 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. If we get a big run like that, which is what we're seeing here, right away, in my mind, I'm thinking, don't trade a lot. Don't expect a lot of in and out, in and out, perfect, you know, perfect precision. Wait for a real significant price move. Otherwise, you're going to get chopped up. Now, what does that mean? Well, when we have it opening here at 8.30, look to the left. What do we have? We have this high here, and we have the low over here. We can use this one because they're relative equal, but I like this one. Why? Why do I like this one? What's below it? Fair value gap. See that? So it's likely to trade down after it creates this sloppy opening. Look at all this movement in here. Now, as a personal study, there's two or three YouTubers that I watch that trade the equities market indices. And I'm not trying to say anything bad about them. I just like to listen to what they're thinking because they don't look at the market like I do. I'm not suggesting that they're not profitable because they show live trades. They get in the trades, they take them, and sometimes they win and sometimes they don't. But I like to read, kind of like a, a squawk box, what their interpretation of price is. And they're looking at this area in here, and it's back and forth. They think if it, goes, if it goes here, it's going to go there. If it goes here, if it's going to go there. It's all these scenarios that are going through you know, randomly in their live streams. So when I'm watching price, I'm listening for them to want to be a buyer. So when they're trying to be a buyer, that means they're, they're already hunting a continuation of this move here. I want to see a low form. Now, this is what we have for the today. We, we start going lower first, so that's good. We create a pseudo Judas swing. But did it create a nice low and turn away from it? Mm-mm. Look at all this back and forth. And it created these suspect lows in here. Relative equal lows, there's going to be sell side building up below that sell stops. Okay. 
when it starts to go higher, anyone that was long overnight, they're going to jam their stop loss right underneath that. Okay, when this occurs, that's the very scenario I'm looking for. Now, right away in my mind, here's what I want you to understand. If there's a big move overnight for equities, this is not Forex. Okay, this part is not Forex. It's just for trading like NASDAQ, Dow, and E-mini S&P. If there's a big run overnight, avoid the New York session. Don't even mess with the New York session. Wait until the other side of lunch at 1 o'clock in the afternoon in New York time. And then anticipate the New York lunch lows taken out or the New York morning session lows, which is what we have here. Notice how we rallied up. We didn't take out the relative equal highs here that was formed ahead of 7 o'clock in the morning. Notice that? Now, this over here, we know this range up here is the high end of that fair value gap. Why do we know that? Because the 14th stopped trading. And it had the indecisive candle in the daily chart. So it's likely that we might trade up into this range high, and this is that range low. So if we can draw down below that low, it was formed initially in the New York session. We have a fair value gap over here with sell side. While we have yet to take out the buy side liquidity here at around, I don't know, 14,575. And then get up to that fair value gap high or the, the boundary of it, okay? kind of like the resistance level of it. So this is the draw on liquidity, and we have a minor draw on liquidity here with buy side liquidity. Look what we have in terms of price action. The NASDAQ drops down, taking out the sell side, digging into that fair value gap. See that? Look at the bodies of the candles. Isn't that neat how it just respects that level back here? Now, that's not random. Okay, These are algorithmic principles that are in play, and these markets are unbelievably precise when they are in better conditions. Right now, if you've been trading with live funds or if you've been trying to follow price action, there's been a lot of, it makes a run, then it goes into this choppy sideways. And it's very frustrating if you're trying to get like sustained price moves or if you don't know how to operate in these, like these sloppy little ranges like this. I personally don't think that this is high probability trading. You can get chopped up, you can get losing trades, you can draw your account down. If you don't control yourself, you can blow your account in these types of conditions. How do you avoid that? How do you avoid running out your account and then scaling back if you're a high frequency type of a trader? How do you draw back on the frequency and look for the better setups? What I'm showing you here. You wait. You don't chase the overnight run and you wait for them to give you a low that everybody overnight will want to Put their stop loss right beneath that after it starts to rally above it. It's even better when you don't have this high taken out yet. See how I took it up here? And it just went right down for them. That's engineering liquidity. It runs up, consolidates, creates a low, starts to rally, and everybody's thinking, I don't want to lose my profits. I don't want to lose out on making more money, but I have to put a stop loss right here because the books tell me I have to do that. So I did the same kind of stuff, folks. I'm not trying to talk down to anybody, but I'm just repeating what a retail trader's mindset would be and the logic behind this. Okay, So the narrative with this day was the stops were trailed below these lows. The afternoon session, again, creates the low of the day, takes the sell side liquidity out into a fair value gap, and then rallies. Now in here, I'm going to teach you a little bit more about that watch. Notice we don't really have a fair value gap down here, but it gives us the basis for expecting the price to start to rally into the afternoon. Now, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 1400 on this uh, trading view chart, that starts 2 o'clock in the afternoon in New York local time. We have the market trading down into an imbalance over here. Liquidity resting below these relative equal lows is taken out. So what are we looking at? We've seen a price run that we don't think needs to come back down here because the logic is the overnight stops have been ran out down here. There's no reason for the market to want to come back down there. But we have this low and these relative equal lows here post New York lunch. New York lunch is noon to one o'clock in the afternoon, New York local time. So the imbalance, we trade down into that. What's the likelihood of it coming all the way through the imbalance and then going after that low? Not likely. Not likely, not after seeing this run here. 
they don't want to give these traders another chance to get back in. They got stopped out. So it's going to be a little bit more sneakier when they make these new setups to continue into a higher run. So they take out the sell side below these relative equal lows, take those stops out, and then it rallies and it drops back down. Now here, watch. We have a swing high right here. It breaks it. Does it trade above that? Yes. Was it energetic? Yes. Does it have a fair value gap? Yes. So now the market trades down into it here, creates a short-term low. You could be a buyer there. There's nothing wrong with that. But say you missed it. Say you just, I mean, this is a one-minute chart. Say you missed it and the market starts to run off like this. But then it gives you another opportunity. I've had many times trades form just like this, where I was looking for something. I was waiting for a setup to happen. Either my cell phone's buzzing or I grab a drink. You know, it's just outside of reach. I got to go walk over to the other end of the desk, grab it. And then all of a sudden, here you go. I miss it. It takes off. The fair value gap is even better when you have the sell side liquidity resting below a short-term low. And the drop down into it here, you can use that low as your entry or minus one tick. Okay. This short-term low forms at 2.34 p.m. Now, if you look at the low figure up here, that value represents that candle right there. So that's why you see it highlighted here. When I took a screenshot, I'm holding underneath this candle so that way the reference points up here are directly related to this candle. So you can see the low is 14,528 and a half. So you could be a buyer on a limit at 14,528 and a quarter. Or maybe if you want to try to reach for the, you know, the 20 even number. Either way, that's a nice place to put a limit order in. The short-term low down here, after the fair value gap forms, that's where your stop loss is. That's the rules. So you have an entry point, your stop, and between the two of them, it works out to be, okay, let's say you have, 14, 14 and a quarter in terms of risk. Okay, so 14 and a quarter points or handles of total risk. And let's assume that you were trading, I don't know, six contracts on the micro. You're essentially looking at buying and risking $85 to make about $300. So, it's about 3.5 to 1 reward the risk. Thereabouts. I'm roughing. I don't have a calculator in front of me, folks. Just you know, do the math. <laughs> now, here, this value is important because I want you to see in these conditions, you can't expect it to be perfect. You can't be, you know, expecting to be in there at the lowest point, no drawdown, no heat on the position, and then it just goes in your favor. Don't think like that. You can see on this candle, if you would have bought here, you would have had nine points of heat, okay, or basically $54 if you were trading six micros. Now, obviously, it goes up more than that if you're trading one mini because it's $20 per handle. But overall, this is a nice little setup with the afternoon using the logic over here, even if it doesn't give us a fair value gap, the, you know, the setups that I'm teaching you to use. Using the fair value gap, afternoon, taking the stops, it provides the baseline for bias for the afternoon. Now, what did I teach you here? I taught you that you can use these reference points with the underlying sentiment that's already in motion. If you didn't trade overnight and take that big run, I didn't get any of that run. I didn't do anything with that. If you missed that, it doesn't matter because that is something that's going to give you more insight. And it tells you when to avoid the morning session. Don't trade it. Everybody's going to be doing what? Think about it. Everybody woke up and saw these markets and they all wanted to do what? They wanted to buy it because it's going up a lot and they want to chase it. That idea leads many times to losing trades and then it starts this cycle where you go into this Chasing, 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 and then when the market does these sideways consolidations and sloppy, choppy market conditions, it it's literally like a blowtorch <laughs> on your account. If you don't know how to stop 
or if you don't know what you're doing, you can literally talk yourself into millions of trades and then draw the account down. Last slide, and just to hammer this down, this is zoomed in on a one-minute chart. Swing high, broken, fair value gap right there, and we have that short-term low here. I've noted it here. So that's where you would be basically entering on with that idea. Trading below that is where the sell stops are. Trading below that. Now, it goes below that. Now, some of you have mentioned in the comment section, does this invalidate the fair value gap? No, it does not. The idea is the fair value gaps. Well, look at the look at the body of this candle here. Isn't that respecting that? Yes. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I know prices sometimes, especially the way it is right now, it's very volatile. So I'm permitting a, a greater level of imperfection in price delivery and then using the logic of the fair value gap as the basis for my entry idea. And then using the stop premise, which it didn't get it didn't get it here. It didn't stop you out. You had basically what? Five what was that? Five or so uh, more handles before you would have been stopped. Now, watching it live might make you a little nervous. But at some point, folks, you're going to have to get used to, if you're going to trade like this in these really little, little time frames, and you're trying to be very nimble, you're going to have to learn to trust the setups and let the stops do their jobs. And if they, if it gets stopped out, that's just one trade you got wrong. It's not your career. Look for the next one. Now, I'm going to throw this in here as a bonus, but, you know, Take it for what it is. It rallies here, takes off, and does not take out that. The buy side liquidity resting above here did not get taken here yet. And then we had this imbalance. And it trades down into it and then hits what? The order block. That's a buy. And you can, if you miss this one, you can pick up this one based on the logic I teach on the YouTube channel. So this is actually something that's taught in the YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, this whole pattern here is exactly right out of my high probability short-term trading or scalping series. I can't remember exactly what the title was, but uh, this pattern has right in that. And then it runs for that liquidity there. So there's two setups there. So I took something from the free lessons that's already on the YouTube channel and also amplifying something I've been teaching in this mentorship series. Hopefully you found this one insightful. And until I talk to you next time, be safe.